In the previous lecture, we discussed the introduction to the signal flow graphs. Now in this presentation, we will discuss the Mason's gain rule. So let's get started. We will first see some important points of Mason's gain rule. So let us start with the first point. In order to calculate the overall transfer function of a system, an American electronics engineer, S.J. Mason, introduced a rule which is called as the Mason's gain rule. S.J. Mason was an American electronics engineer who introduced a rule which is called as the Mason's gain rule and this rule is used to calculate the overall transfer function of a control system. Moving on to the next point, the Mason's gain formula is given by Cs over Rs which is the transfer function of a system equal to summation from k equal to 1 to n p sub k multiplied with del k over delta, where n is the number of forward paths, p sub k is the forward path gain of kth forward path, del k is the associated path factor or it is also called as the cofactor and delta is the determinant of SFG. Let us understand this formula in detail. Cs over Rs equal to summation from k equal to 1 to n pk del k over delta. So here n is the number of forward paths. We have discussed the forward path in the previous lecture and it is represented by a letter n in Mason's gain formula. p sub k is the forward path gain of kth forward path. If any signal flow graph is having two forward paths, for example, then the forward path gain of first forward path will be P1. The forward path gain of second forward path will be P2 and so on. Similarly, del K is the associated path factor. If there are two forward paths, then there will be two associated path factors. The associated path factor which is associated with first forward path will be del 1 and the associated path factor which is associated with second forward path will be del 2 and delta is the determinant of SFG. So now we are done with the introduction of Mason's gain formula. We will now discuss that how we can calculate the determinant of SFG and the associated path factor. We will first see that how we can calculate the determinant of SFG there is a defined formula to calculate the determinant of SFG and it is given as 1 minus sum of gains of all the individual loops plus sum of products of gains of all possible combinations of two non-touching loops minus sum of products of gains of all possible combinations of three non-touching loops plus so on. In the previous lecture, we discussed that what is an individual loop, what are non-touching loops. So we have to identify the individual loops and the non-touching loops. We need to find out the gains of those loops and we have to put them in this formula in order to calculate the determinant of SFG. This formula will be more clear to you when we will see some examples. Let us now move on to the associated path factor del K. It is also called as the delta part of SFG that is non-touching with the kth forward path. And the formula to calculate the associated path factor is 1 minus sum of gains of all the individual isolated loops plus sum of products of gains of all the combinations of two non-touching isolated loops minus sum of products of gains of all the combinations of three non-touching isolated loops plus so on. We will discuss that what is an isolated loop and how we can use this formula in order to calculate the associated path factor with some examples. As of now, I want you all to take these two formulae in your notes. These will be very clear to you when we will discuss some examples. Let us now take an example to understand that how we can apply Mason's gain formula in order to calculate the overall transfer function. Find the transfer function of the block diagram given below. One closed loop system is given to us and we need to find out the overall transfer function. 
This is a negative feedback system and we already know that the overall transfer function is GS over 1 plus GSHS. Let us try to find out the overall transfer function of this closed loop system by the use of signal flow graph. For that sake, we need to convert this block diagram into an SFG and then we need to find out the overall transfer function by applying the Mason's gain formula. So moving on to the solution. Firstly, we will convert this block diagram into its equivalent SFG. I will give you one procedure by which we can convert a block diagram into an SFG easily. Firstly, we will create a forward path from the input node to the output node and then we will draw the nodes wherever required between the input node and the output node. So we have a forward path which starts from this input node R and then we have a summing point. A summing point is represented as a node. We have discussed this in the previous lecture. Now we have a takeoff point. So this takeoff point is also represented as a node. Moreover, we have a block of gain G which is present between the summing point and the takeoff point. So we will have a branch of gain G which will be present between these two nodes. Because we know that a block of gain G in the block diagrams is equivalent to a branch of gain G in SFG. Now we have a takeoff point of gain H which is given as an input to this summing point. So we will have a branch which starts from this node and it will be connected with this node and the gain of this branch will be minus H. The direction of this arrow is from this node to this node because the direction of this arrow is from this takeoff point to this summing point. And the gain of this branch is minus H because this takeoff point is having a gain H and it is a negative feedback. Now, this signal is given to the output node. For simplicity, we will name this node as X and this node as Y. This is the complete SFG representation of this block diagram. Now we just have to apply the Mason's gain formula in this SFG in order to find out the overall transfer function. And in order to apply the Mason's gain formula, the first step is to find out the forward path. In this SFG, there is only one forward path which is this forward path and it is R, X, Y, C. The step number two is to find out the forward path gain which is the product of branch gains which encounter in traversing this forward path. And in this case, it will be 1 multiplied with G multiplied with 1, which will be equal to G. Now we need to identify the loop in this SFG. So we can see that this is a loop. If we start from this node X and if we travel up to this node Y, and if we travel back up to this node X via this branch, then it will be a loop. So we can say that X, Y, X is a loop in this SFG and the loop gain will be the product of these two branch gains, which will be G multiplied with minus H, which is equal to minus GH. Now, the next step is to calculate the determinant of SFG and we know the formula to calculate the determinant delta equal to 1 minus sum of all the individual loop gains plus sum of product of gains of all possible combinations of two non-touching loops minus and so on. But in this signal flow graph, we have only one loop. So there will be no non-touching loops and that's why the gain of non-touching loops will be equal to zero. So the formula of determinant of SFG for this signal flow graph will be delta equal to 1 minus sum of all individual loop gains and rest all the factors will become 0. In this case, we have only one individual loop and the gain of this loop is equal to minus GH. If we put the loop gain in this formula, we will have 1 minus of minus GH. So we will have the value of delta equal to 1 plus GH and this is the determinant of this signal flow graph. Now the last step is to calculate the associated path factor. Moving on to the calculation of associated path factor delta 1. 
If we want to calculate the associated path factor, we need to erase the forward path. And then after that, we need to identify the remaining closed loops. The remaining closed loops after erasing the forward path are called as the isolated loops. In this signal flow graph, we have only one forward path and that's why there will be only one associated path factor. Now, if we erase this forward path, the signal flow graph will look like this. Now we can observe that this loop is destroyed because these two nodes are erased and this loop is incomplete without these two nodes. So we can say that there is no isolated loop left in this signal flow graph. So we can say that the number of isolated loops is equal to zero. Now the formula to calculate the associated path factor is del k equal to one minus sum of gains of all the individual isolated loops plus sum of product of gains of all combinations of two non-touching isolated loops and so on. But in this case, number of isolated loops is equal to zero. And that's why the gains of all isolated loops will be equal to zero. So we have del1 equal to 1 minus sum of all individual isolated loop gains and so on. But in this case, this factor will also be equal to zero. So we have del1 equal to 1 minus zero, which is equal to one. So we have the value of associated path factor equal to one. We can note that if the number of isolated loops in a signal flow graph is equal to zero, then the value of associated path factor will always be equal to one. Now, applying the Mason's gain formula in order to calculate the overall transfer function, we have CS over RS equal to summation from K equal to one to N, PK multiplied with del K over delta. In this signal flow graph, the number of forward paths is equal to one, and that's why the value of N will be equal to one. So we will have CS over RS equal to P1 multiplied with del1 over delta. We have the value of P1 equal to G, which is the forward path gain. We have the value of delta1 equal to one, and we have the value of determinant of SFG delta equal to one plus GH. Putting all these values, we will have G multiplied with one over one plus GH. And if we solve this, we will have the transfer function C over R equal to G over one plus GH. And this is the closed loop transfer function of a negative feedback system. And we have calculated this by the use of Mason's gain formula. So I hope you got that how we can convert a block diagram into its equivalent SFG and apply the Mason's gain formula in order to calculate the overall transfer function. You will find this method very simple when we will discuss some more examples. As of now, we are done with this lecture. Thank you for watching this lecture. I'll end this one here. See you in the next lecture.